there is always some controversy um, in trying to either understand or explain subcutaneous suture patterns versus subcuticular suture patterns. And one of the problems we have in this course using the, the DAISY is that there really is no uh, good way to demonstrate um, the subcuticular suture patterns because the subcuticular tissues really include the deep part of the, uh, the dermis and it's really hard to engage the deep part of the dermis on the daisies. Um, and so a subcuticular pattern is one done very close to the skin edge in which you engage the dermis in order to bring the skin edges um, as close as possible uh, together. And so in this course it's much easier because of the construction of the daisy to perform the subcutaneous uh, suture pattern. And frankly, the subcutaneous suture pattern is by far the most common suture pattern of the two that you would use. Uh, and so for this course, I'd like to have you learn uh, the subcutaneous uh, suture pattern. And again, it's even hard to demonstrate what the subcutaneous tissues are using this uh, portion of the daisy. So we're going to assume that this foam part of the daisy uh, comprises the subcutaneous tissues. And so the, the, it, you can do an interrupted subcutaneous uh, suture pattern, but I'm going to demonstrate a continuous subcutaneous suture pattern because simply it's, it's by far the most common pattern that you use in the subcutaneous tissues. Um, and so we'll demonstrate that. Now you can see I'm getting some, some of the daisy is kind of frayed here. Notice, however, that my suture went in, the near bite went in obviously deep to the uh, skin edge, exited um, either deep to the subcutaneous tissue or within the subcutaneous tissue, then went from deep to superficial on the far side of the incision, uh, exiting uh, deep to the, the skin edge as well. And so both arms of the suture, both limbs of the suture are in subcutaneous tissues. Now, some uh, surgeons would elect to bury the knot to begin um, this suture pattern. Uh, I'm not burying the knot, so you'll see that the knot now is exposed. Um, one of the issues that you will face in life with this uh, suture pattern is that depending on how close your um, knot is or your, your suture bite is to the skin edge, you might expose your knot. So one of the things is, is that you're going to come back and do a skin suture uh, pattern superficial to this. And you want to make sure that when you do that, that you properly bury the knot by suturing the skin over the, the top of your subcutaneous um, suture pattern. If you are worried about that, then you, of course, can begin this pattern by burying the knot, as we've demonstrated in another video segment. So I've, I've cut the, the suture end of the short end of the suture, and now I'm ready to begin the continuous portion of the subcutaneous closure, or a simple continuous suture pattern constructed in the subcutaneous portions portion of the daisy. Again, in life, you might have an assistant surgeon that would be helping you run the suture. Here, notice I'm grasping the needle, not by the, the actual uh, teeth of the, the rat tooth forceps, but encircling, stabilizing, pulling through, snipping, and I'm ready now, or snapping, and I'm ready to um, begin my bite. It's a way of speeding things up a little bit by grasping, snapping your needle holder, correctly in place and beginning your next suture bite. Now, now I found it necessary because of the gap in the daisy to reset my needle midway. And now I'm ready to, to tie. Again, for this course, you should try to um, uh, develop a gathering technique. And then for this course, um, we uh, find a, a, a proper method and in life by that way, uh, by the, by the way, uh, a proper method to end a continuous suture pattern by then tying back to your last loop. Again, if you do that technique, you'll notice that your knot then ends up obliquely across your surgical incision, which is proper. Now, this knot is not buried. 
And so, again, you're doing a subcutaneous closure. If I left these um, ends real long, what would happen? You would see that they would stick through the, the, the skin. And so that would not be a proper way and a proper length to trim your the ends of your suture. So the proper length would be leaving maybe just an eighth of an inch or a little bit less. And thus, when you go ahead and make your or create your skin suture, you'll properly bury the knot of your simple continuous subcutaneous closure.